Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Illumination. I am so sorry we skipped last week. Uh, Val and I were busy doing healing. <laughs> so we are back this week. We have a fantastic guest. We are super excited. Uh, we've got Travis Preston with us today, all things firewalking. And I am going to quickly introduce you to him with his beautiful bio. Here we go. Travis has been traveling the world for more than 10 years, seeking guidance and empowerment for himself to share with you. Seeking guidance from Native, Native American elders, as well as spiritual teachers and masters of the craft. With his experience, training, and expertise in coaching, firewalk firewalking, shamanic navigation, channeling, and speaking. He has molded an approach that simplifies and humanizes the unseen spirit world in healing. Your success is the most important thing to him. Travis understands the struggles and challenges that life can present because he's been there himself. He's walked through the fire metaphorically before bringing firewalking to you and knows what it takes to overcome obstacles to help you transform your life. His journey with mental illness, addiction, and spiritual confusion has blessed him with the gift of compassion, understanding, and belief in those who show up and are ready, no matter where they are or what they have been through. That is that is so beautiful. <laughs> I, I, as I was reading it, I started to tap into you, Travis. I, I love it. Did you feel the shift? I could actually. Yeah, I did. You were like, all of a sudden, I'm present. What is happening? Yes, so, I love wow, that beautiful energy. Oh my goodness, I'm super mm. excited. I'm encased in chills. Welcome. What are you doing this morning, Travis? <laughs> I am I'm doing wonderful. Um, it's been a great morning so far. I'm so excited to be here. So thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, really I'm sure there's yeah. always so much interest in firewalking. I've done it many times. And every time I post about it, everyone's like, Oh, when's the next one? What is this? What is going on? So I, I'm just curious, like, how did you actually get into firewalking? Wow, what an incredible story it is to, of, of my my origin story. It's it's quite it's quite interesting because I never knew this existed. You know, much like everybody else who finds firewalking, you're like, wait, that's an actual thing. Um, and so I started my journey, you know, finding sobriety, you know, finding ceremony, finding these these like other alternative forms of healing through the native culture in the beginning. And uh, I was always very drawn to the fire. I always volunteered to fire keep. I would pull all nighters, you know, keeping the fire, just sitting by myself with the fire, um, just as a part of that origin story of, of my sobriety. Um, and then a few years after that, uh, 2017, 2016, 2017, I had somebody I met along the path who mentioned to me that they lead firewalks. And I said, what, what does that mean? <laughs> like and all of us. <laughs> I said, I, I, what does fire walking mean? Like you actually, she's like, it's fire walking. You actually fire walk. And I said, like, like barefoot, you know, I have the same reactions that every single person has when you say this, or they're hearing this for the first time. And I went through the gamut. And as soon as I heard it, there was just this ignition inside of me that I knew because of my connection to fire, because just some calling, I didn't know how to interpret at the time. I had to do this. My soul, my spirit, my body knew it. So it was almost a year, maybe six months to a year before she actually did it. And so I was calling her every month. Hey, have you decided when you're doing this thing yet? I'm ready to do this firewalking stuff. And um, she finally had it. And, you know, I had been on my spiritual development journey at that point for about six to eight months. And I was rigorously doing classes, doing trainings, all these different things to try to understand the things that happened after I got sober, after I found ceremony, after I started doing all of those different um, sacred tasks with the, with the native culture that I was invited to be a part of. And I just felt like I hit was kept hitting the ceiling. I hit the ceiling so hard every time that I would try to step further into mediumship or the psychic gifts or just more of the spiritual stuff. I always wanted to journey. I had been studying journey work for a year and a half. I couldn't journey myself. I was a master of the books. I was a master of the knowledge. I couldn't actually successfully do it myself. And I didn't understand what it meant. 
So fast forward to the firewalk. I get to this firewalk. I set my intentions. I get ready to go to the firewalk. It was that firewalk. It was in that space that all of a sudden my clairs just exploded open. That ceiling was shattered. And all of a sudden I was this radio tower to hear spirit. Yeah. And I could hear everything. And I, and it's almost as if like the universe just started flooding all of these downloads into me about the firewalk and about fire walking and about everything that was the what, why, the where, the how of what, what it does. And, and I just somehow knew after my first event and I luckily had such a profound relationship with the person uh, who led that first fire walk two weeks later, um, we collaborated. She really led it, but I supported just because it felt so true to me. And I led my first firewalk and we filled it. I led it with her and we filled it two Travis, weeks later. Awesome. That's wonderful. Can I slow you down just a little bit? And can we just backtrack to when you were receiving these downloads? Um, our listeners understand. Oh, that. yeah. I mean, Val and I talk about channeling and psychic mediumship and and um, that deep, that higher connection with our higher consciousness. But when you talk about the downloads that you got for firewalking, can you share with our listeners what that means? What were the downloads? What was your epiphany? Oh, oh the epiphany was just this. You know, there was a lot of there was a lot of information. There was a lot of specifics that was coming in about where I was, what I was doing, and the way we did it. Yes. Yeah, so but for you, the downloads. Great- is more it was like just clarity and information right but i would say the most profound download that came in was this acknowledgement and recognition of being here before of knowing this medicine Mm -hmm. it's like being reintroduced to an old friend and for me that that's something that i've never forgotten and i've never lost at any firewalk i've ever hosted Every That's time I feel like I'm coming back to an old friend and it's, and it's really so beautiful. That's amazing. I think that like, yeah, just understanding like what actually is a download since we're talking about it. And I think, yeah, yeah for, for people that aren't really in, in this field, it really is just clarity and, and information. It's almost like an awareness that you didn't have before. Um, you know, all of a sudden, you know what you know, you know, where you right. didn't before. And that's super beautiful. Um, so it seems like that moment for you is really clearing a lot of energetic blocks where you you could receive that information where you were so blocked before. And then it brought in all of this understanding for you. Um, so thank you for sharing that. But like, I think when people think about firewalking, they just they want to know, like, what what is it? <laughs> you know, like, what yeah. is firewalking? <laughs> right. And um, the simplest answer is that it's something that that somehow every culture around the world has found their way to and has an origin story and an indigenous background in doing for some sort of healing or ceremonial purposes. And so it's not really owned or attributed or it doesn't have an origin to an to one culture. Because as they've done more research, it goes in stretches across the world. It's found in every continent. You know, the Vikings used to firewalk chains, right? Mm -hmm. They used to heat up the chains in the fires and walk across the chains. The uh, Hawaiians, they would walk the lava, right? The Indians, over in India, they'll walk the, the rocks and the coals, right? They all have different origin stories, and it's found all over the world. You've and done quite a bit of traveling to experience different um, fire walking techniques, right? Yeah. Um, so last year, I um, the majority of my traveling was um, in England and Scotland. Uh, mm-hmm. So I had gone over there to support and be a part of um, some really profound trainings and some different festivals, um, learning how to really safely bring the medicine to large groups and containers while still bringing like life-changing experiences. Yeah. So can we talk about the life-changing experiences? So, you know, I've had my first experience yeah. with you both, uh, you know, Valerie was leading in breath work and you were leading in the fire walk. And I know for me, um, you know, I, I, I know that 
fire is is such a powerful transmuter and 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 i and 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 i think for me the importance is that mind over matter that i can do this and it's sort of metaphorically being able to break through other barriers of things that we think we can or cannot do and so i am just curious when you talk about fire medicine um what are some of those very concrete benefits that people, participants can get from participating in something like this with you? Mm. So the simplest, the simplest form of being able to answer that would be, um, you know, how does it, how does it relate or translate into your everyday life? I think the purpose of healing for me is to have some sort of benefit that carries beyond the ceremony, that carries beyond the moment that supports you and who you are in, in the life that you're living in some form, right? It's all about the takeaways. And so when we think about fire walking, it organically will bring up a lot of fear for most people. Um, and that translates into metaphorically representing fear for anything in anyone's life, because it's we've been trained our whole lives that fire is dangerous, fire burns, be careful, don't you know don't stand too close for too long and it can be dangerous and harmful but it has a very soft side it has a very inviting side it has a very healing side and transmuting side and so when you're able to face those fears when you're able to trust that the universe that the fire that all of these energies have a higher plan for you or that they're taking care of and supporting you much like when we face fear in life, you have to have an element of faith that everything's going to be okay if you're going to step into what you believe in or what you're afraid of. And so the fire can really represent that for a lot of people. And when they walk across those fires and those ceremonies or at these events, it empowers them to know that they can walk through the fires of their own lives and overcome challenges that they their mind may have told them before that they can't. Yeah. And so what I'm really hearing there is like really shifting mindsets and programs of like the way that we live, you know, so you have this idea in your head that just feels really daunting or scary. And you have a mindset where you can get over that and step into a place of empowerment. But I know you also like talked a little bit about transmuting and for some people that are kind of new in the spiritual world, you know, uh, like they might not understand what transmuting energy is. And I know that, you know, a lot of spiritual people do understand that, you know, there's all sorts of uh, healing communities or healing that uses the purple flame or, you know, whatever you want to describe as uh, an energy transmuter within their own modalities. But what exactly is transmuting energy? So the simplest way that I can explain it is when you put a piece of wood in the fire, it changes shape and form. It changes to ash and then it's carried by the wind, right? When you put metal into a fire, it turns to a liquid, right? It transforms energy and it can transform physical objects and things as well as the things within a person to help burn it away and help it take like retake new shape. Yes. Yeah, so and we, that's where the faith and the trust come in that it's there to support you and that all of these other supports are are all around you being a part of that process too. So I guess oh Susan, do you want to step in? I, well, I just I just had a thought as you were talking. Um I can a, a question that I have for you because I I I experienced this. I had always wanted to experience firewalking. And even when I was there, I was not sure until the very last moment whether or not I was going to do it. Because I, and this is what I would like you to speak to, Travis, um, that the mental preparation is very important too and can absolutely impact our experience, right? Because if you are terrified, if you are holding that fear um, that you can certainly get burned, we are you are walking over coals. And I also read somewhere as in preparation for uh, being with the two of you for that all day event, that there's also uh, healing in the burn if you get burned on uh, certain parts of your foot. And I don't know if you wanna speak to that too, cause I found that um, equally fascinating and of course made complete sense, so. So um, so the, the first part is 
you know, the mindset is everything. And all of our mindset is created based on a lot of our environments, a lot of experiences. It's all, um, it's all pretty much evidence-based creation um, when one form or another, right? Whether it was a previous experience from like the past, or it's something that people have told you over and over again that you've kind of just taking at face value. It's the stuff that we can also hold in our subconscious, right? That we're not even aware of. We, we adopt these ideas and sometimes aren't even aware of things. Right. And so when we approach the fire, it it wishes in and it organically challenges a lot of those things that we're not aware of. And and that's the transmute the transmutation. That's the transformational process is awareness. Um a lot of times awareness is is trans is part of the transformational journey it's not always in completion but it's it's very profound to gain an awareness about how your body reacts when you face these different types of things um and so when people walk when they get to the other side at the end of it it's like okay maybe i don't know what i was facing but i know i was facing something big i'm not quite sure what it meant but I know that what it took for me to what I needed to overcome before I took my first step was a really big thing. And so that leads into the burns. And so those kisses, we call them in the industry, fire kisses. And essentially, it's the way that the fire will communicate with a person to share with them energetically where there's energy blocked in the body as they were walking across the coals. So in the feet, there's a reflect there, you know, there, every part of the foot connects to every, uh, the foot connects to every part of the body. And so when you're getting ready to walk, if you're having some sort of emotional block, a spiritual block, some doubt in your head, if you're stuck in your head thinking about it, you might get a kiss on your foot or just a little hot spot that reflects what was being what energy was blocked when you walk across it. And I want to say, because I've firewalked many times, um, I feel connected to that form of healing in a lot of ways. Um, I want to kind of like talk about what that actually looks like. Because when you think of a burn, you think of a burn, like, you know, you're walking across these really hot coals, these, you know, little uh, red flames, like off to the side, like it, it looks really intense. But when I, I really, when I, the first time I ever walked, um, I did get a kiss. I, and I haven't, I haven't since, but that one time it was like a little like red mark for me. It wasn't like my skin was burned off or something was burned through, or I was in pain for days. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I need to go to the hospital. For me, it just looked like a little mark on my foot. And then I went to that little chart and I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Actually, it was just, it's wild when you see it like that in a very material way um, with what you're going through at that given point in time in your life um, for it to show up that way. So, but I did want to kind of share that it's for me anyways, and I don't know with your experience, it's just almost like a tiny little mark. Um, I don't know if other people give you feedback afterwards. So the number one thing to speak on when it does come to burns, right, is, you know, the element that fire is really fire and it really does burn upwards over a thousand degrees when we're burning it, you know, so, you know, there's always a chance whenever you light a fire that somebody could get burned, right? Mm -hmm. With that being said, um, <clears throat> I've personally led um, somewhere in the ballpark of a hundred firewalks, um, maybe somewhere in the ballpark of, you know, a thousand people or so. Um, and my experience is, is that 95% to 90, I would say close between 95 and 99%. It's the hot spot. It's mm -hmm. a little red spot that tingles a little bit. And you feel this little, like this little tingling on that spot on your foot. And when the chart comes around, usually when people see the chart and they recognize what it is, it's almost as if that tingling goes away or starts to alleviate. It's very, it's very magical. And, and I have countless experiences of people who have um, shared that magic with me. And so the majority of people get that. 
Um, you know, that other one to 5% might have a little uh, kiss that blisters a little bit. And then, you know, there's, you know, there's always that 1% or half a percent of people. Um, I haven't personally experienced it, but I know that there are stories out there. So, you know, just being educationally and, and yeah. unhonest about, you know, the industry is, you know, there are stories of people getting hurt. Um, I personally haven't experienced it. I'm very blessed and honored. Um, but, you know, just something to be aware of out in, in the world of firewalking. Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, it's important when you're leading an event like that to lead people in a way that they can be safe and present for what they're doing. So I noticed, you know, we did an event together. Um, you were leading yours, I was leading mine, but just in observation of what you were doing, it seemed very much like, you know, you're very energetically connected to the experience and like picking up on the frequency and vibration of where people need to be to go across, making sure that you're leading them in a way where they're not like hesitating as they're walking. And I think like having somebody lead it in that way probably creates a great sense of safety within the container of fire walking. And I'm sure there's probably experiences that could be very different. You know, that was just, and I've seen you lead many fire walks um, before, and it always kind of has that same feel to it. Yeah. The, the beautiful thing of fire walking is um, every fire walk you ever attend, whether it's the, another fire walk with me or a fire walk with other people leading it. Um, it's really, um, it's really unique every experience is going to be so different and so mm -hmm. unique. And the reason is, is because you're also going to be so unique and so different each time you step to the fire. Right. Um, so, you know, really it's, it's just about finding what resonates with you, hearing the call and, you know, taking a chance when those little butterflies start to surface uh, because butterflies surface with this work. It's a very mm -hmm. common, common thing that we hear uh, when people are getting ready to sign up, the little butterflies or things coming up. And sometimes it's excitement, sometimes it's the fear. Um, and sometimes people aren't always used to that type of fiery energy. So yeah, yeah. I, I want to just I want to something else coming up for me as I'm listening. Um, so I felt that Val prepare us uh, in releasing through the breath work to really, I mean, it felt like everything that you guys did in this workshop was very intentional. We broke an arrow with our throat. I mean, there were different, there were different things where we had to enter into, um, these fears, these limiting beliefs, these things that, right. So I, I, so I was very aware that that entire workshop was very intentional to really help us prepare for this big thing of walking over these coals that, um, I don't, I can't speak for any of the other participants except myself. I had never done that before. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, there's going to be an element of fear because they're hot burning coals. I'm watching this fire burn and I'm like, hell no, like I can't, wa like, why would I even do this? Like, I'm afraid if I'm afraid I'm going to burn, I'm going to like torch, I'm going to just like, get, I'm going to ignite and just it burn. Is a massive, <laughs> it's a massive fire <laughs> yeah, it's a massive fire and i'm like am I insane? and i was sitting there i'm like maybe i am insane maybe i actually <laughs> am crazy and i'm like well i certainly can't walk over this thing if i'm afraid because fear will definitely be the death of me so i i, I went through all of these mental gymnastics and i do a lot of different things in this healing profession and and so, but I was very aware as the day wore on and the breath work and the arrows, and I felt very prepared. By the time the actual coals came around, I had no fear left. I was like, I can do this. I just broke an arrow. Yeah. And, and, and that, so it, it was sort of, it felt intentional that my confidence and my release built on each other to get to this actual fire walk. And I am just interested, Travis, because I'm sure all of your fireworks look very different. This, you know, I'm sure the rituals and what you do, but what in talking to people who could be very interested in this, what would you suggest in preparation for something like a firewalk if you don't have this all day event of really preparing people for this, um, for walking over coals? So for me, generally speaking, um, all of my events are a five or six hour event. Um, when I run corporate firewalks or we're doing private firewalks, 
uh, those events can be tailored down all the way down to two and a half hours. Um, so we can tailor it down to two and a half to three and a half hours. Um, if people want that for their specific group, for their organization, they are limited in time. Uh, but generally, um, I try to make each firewalk a story. And I try to create and paint a picture for people to be brought along on a journey together, no matter where they're at, starting at the same starting point and being able to be led all the way to that place that you that you experienced when you got to the fire, when, when the coals were down. And so for me, it feels like every fire walk um, is its own unique um, creation and process and story that I'm, I'm sharing and I'm leading people on. Um, some of them look very ceremonial. Some of them have a lot more, you know, ceremony and, and offerings and, and different uh, activities that people will participate in. Some of them are much more um, logistical. And I'm really going to speak directly to your, your mindset your perception, your environment, the things that are affecting you directly now and ways to do that. And that might be done through story or through different types of, um, you know, mind opening or expanding um, shares. So, so it's kind of similar in that, like healing isn't linear in, in one particular way where you might feel called to work on different aspects uh, based on the vibration of the crowd that you're working with, which is kind of cool. So like, I, I guess that really opens the door to it being pretty expansive when it comes to like setting a theme around something. Like I know the, and you'll talk about this later, like mm -hmm. there's a specific theme of the next fire walk that you're doing. And I know with us, when we did our event together, I very much tapped into the energy. And even when I was creating my playlist, like the songs felt tailored to the group of the people that were coming. And so there's a lot of like energetic um, involvement in this, I think. Um, and I don't know that all firewalker uh, tenders or and, and leaders and facilitators um, kind of look at it that way. But I do like that that's how you kind of tackle this because being energetically connected, being able to communicate in a very spiritual way does allow you to support what people need in that moment, um, rather than just very much doing the same thing every single time. And that can support people in, in a big way. You know, you think you're coming for this thing and, and um, if everything's done like very robotically, like first we do this, then this, then this. It's like, you know, it's not necessarily like meeting the needs of the people energetically. I will, I will tell you that it's been, it's been very common um, at firewalks that mid firewalk, my schedule goes out the window and spirit comes in and takes over based on the experiences that people have had or are in the middle of having so far during, um, during the events now it doesn't usually take over too much but it's usually like subtract this it's not really so needed right now this other thing that i've done at other events add this right it's not so much you know a free-for-all it's really but it, it really like it's very unique sometimes yeah. the thing that i thought or like i felt needed to be here all of a sudden gets moved here or something that was here moved up here and um it's a it's a very beautiful um experience to be able to be a part of for people. And one of the things that I know that you do, and you also teach the students, because you're a firewalk uh, teacher as well, is the arrow break that uh, Susan was talking about. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Do I have to talk about that? Because I, I do. Hold on. Why don't you talk about that? And I'm just going to grab my broken the arrow. Hold on one second. <laughs> I still have mine from my very first, <laughs> just sitting up on my yeah. shelf. What, what is this? And like, what does it do? And how does it support people on the journey? It's a, um, seat. It's a 28 inch cedar, uh, wooden trainer arrow. That's what it is. Um, and it's something that you broke through and that you overcame. Um, and so, kudos to you, right? And kudos to everybody who's ever done it. It's, um, it's something you never forget. Um, I'll never forget my first arrow. 
It's um, it, it's really true. I had yes. A little demonstration since I have the I just took this out for the very first time. But when you're doing this, the point of the arrow is at like this very soft spot, like in the throat where you feel like if you put pressure here, you're going to oh cough or goodness. choke or like, oh my gosh. So like what happens that gives people the energy and the ability to break this in half just by their will and determination? Yeah, it's, um, it's really that connection to the throat chakra, right? So that spot is uh, known to the spiritual community as the throat chakra. Um, it's like that little soft, squishy spot right above the breastplate, right? That feels like if you if you hunched forward and rolled your shoulders a little, it could go all the way back. Or if you're scared, it gets very, very soft, right? Yeah. And when you get strong and powerful or you hold and you hold your breath in that strength, courage, and faith, right? It starts to stiffen up and you can see it start to move back and forth. And so we use it again, um, and, it, and again, each firewalk, it can be used for something different, but a lot of times uh, it's organically used for either limiting beliefs, things that you say you can't do, or to you know break through some barrier that you're facing a fear, right? It can be a lot of things. It can also be an explosion of manifestation, right? It can be, it can yeah. really be, translated to whatever the event needs, whatever the intentions are of the event. Um, but when you find that strength, you find that plot power, it pushes on this place right here that I believe in acupuncture is also known as a, the, the pressure point for uh, joy. Mm. Um, so in acupuncture, I believe that spot is what you would push on or put a needle in to uh, access That's or open joy. to joy. Interesting. Um, it's amazing what you can do with your own determination. So this is an arrow, but I know that even with the people that you teach, you will bend rebar and you and I actually bent a piece of rebar together. Is that, that's what it is, that metal, that long yeah. metal thing. And we had it on either side and we bent it in half. This is, uh, this is so crazy. Cool. Right. And Same so- lot. Same soft, squishy Same spot. Same soft spot. And this is a <laughs> massive piece of like metal rebar. Yeah. And you just, you bend it in half um, with one person on either end. Um, it's, it really is amazing what mindset and, um, and determination can do in the world of like, just like understanding your intention and where you want to be in life and how empowering that can be for people. Um, because you know, we are so caught up in everyday uh, life and experiences. And, you know, a lot of times we block ourselves. And most of the time, I mean, for me, I know that our biggest block in life is our own avoidance, right? And so mm -hmm. there's little room for that when it comes to this experience, you're facing it dead on. And it just gives a glimpse. I mean, this is so much a part of my work with my clients is it gives a glimpse of the power of who we actually are, not who we think we are, but who we yeah, really yeah. are and, and who yes. we are as creators. And and I think that something you said, I wrote it down because I wanted to go back. Um, you said that you do this with teens in corporate America, which piqued my interest because um, in some respects, it's sort of like the polar opposite of the way that some of these systems operate. And I can imagine how this could be super powerful in, um, in taking team building to a whole different level in terms of what these people can do together, breaking through their own personal barriers, but also working together as a team and whatever goals that they are trying to reach together. I'd love for you, because um, I'm sure we will have listeners that that will pique their interest the way it has piqued mine. Yeah. Um, maybe talking to us a little bit about the the, the benefits that some of these teams um, in the corporate world and how they could benefit from something like this. Sure. Um, so I can speak directly to one that's coming up um, that I have on my calendar that I'm doing in uh, just a few weeks. Um, and a lot of the experiences that they're having is they're feeling the effects of the outside world and the fear that is projected in a lot of different um, parts of our lives creeping in and starting to affect business. And there's fears that are now 
people are, are noticing, giving more power, giving more attention, giving more of their awareness to the fears versus the possibilities. And so um, this one coming up, you know, it's, it's a team of executives who are very, very powerful in their industry that they're in, very big, beautiful industry. And they're noticing that this is starting to stagnate them or somehow influence business. And so they're really looking to find that spark, bring back that life and really step through the, the flames of transformation so that when they're facing these fears with these big opportunities or with these new endeavors that, that land on their plate, that they are a different version of themselves to be able to respond and receive it differently. That's powerful. I um I think that no, really cool. yeah, without them even knowing they're doing energy healing, they are. I know like when I kind of visualize the fire walking itself and we talk about transmuting, it's like our energy <laughs> is part of our auric field. It's part of it's it's lingering, like our our heaviness, our blocks, it's all um together it affects our experience. So as you're walking through that, that fire is transmuting all of this energy that you're willing to and ready to let go of. Um, and yeah. so I love that you're bringing it to a place where it normally wouldn't reach people. And I, and that's the thing about spirituality, like people, you know, are in a box or there's these modalities and I do the same thing with breath work. And so I know that we're on that same wavelength, like make it available in different ways for everybody where you don't have to subscribe to this understanding of what's happening to actually have a transformational experience. I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. I think it could be super profound in that world. Um, so I have more of a personal question for you, Travis. Um, sure. You talked about that you had lived this life in your uh, in your bio of overcoming obstacles and addiction issues and things like that. Um, and I know that, um, you know, addiction issues are often the solution to people's pain, right? We call it the problem in our world, but it's often somebody's solution to their deep pain and the numbing, et cetera. All of us are healers here and people come to us for a whole bunch of different reasons. Addiction is often a part of that. And so yeah. I'm interested in hearing from you, how can fire walking be beneficial to people that may be in recovery and maybe they're not, maybe they're still actively using. I'd love to hear, um, yeah, I would just love to hear that perspective from you as virus as a healing modality for that. So it will take me into a little bit of a rabbit hole to do this, but I think I can pull it around for you guys if you can bear with me. Sure. I'm a great listener. <laughs> um, so I grew up um, diagnosed with a lot of um, mental health issues is what they were told to me and, and what I was subscribed to for my whole part of beginning part of my life. Um, I was taught and told that I had to take a medicine to be okay for the rest of my life. And there was nothing that was out there that could help me with it other than taking this medicine right now at different stages of my life, that was true. And with the awarenesses that I had at that time, very true. I needed those medications to support me in certain ways. So I'm always, I always like to kind of preface that there are situations where the medicines are really important and really helpful on someone's journey. Mm -hmm. um, even though for me personally, it was, it was something that I had to overcome. Um, so having that background, finding all of these different spiritual the tools and the different ceremonies and all these different activities, you know, it helped me to, you know, be able to have a belief that something else out there could help me and that I could be in charge of my own self. It like empowered me to be able to, and it can empower people to know that they are capable of facing those different obstacles that are causing or leading to the addiction, right? For me, that. it was dependency. I felt like, like there was nothing I could do. I felt very disempowered that that was just something I needed to accept and I never could accept it. And so 
finding something like firewalking, something that reignites your belief in yourself, your belief that you are capable of so much more than you even can comprehend or understand is really powerful in the journey of understanding or really um, battling what causes addiction because my addiction was caused by my mental health issues and all of the energetic stuff going on that nobody had an answer to. Yeah, and I, I think, think too, oh, go ahead, Val. It's okay, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I was just gonna say, you know, in my work, um, you know, people come from such horrific backgrounds and abuse, all kinds of different abuse, right? And they end up using addiction, very obviously as self-medication and, so their sense of self-worth is so beaten down and, and, and I won't go there around. I mean, I think all of us have ailments around self-worth and in varying degrees. Um, yes. And it is that, and, and everything is connected. Absolutely everything is connected to our belief system, which then right, is connected to our thoughts and our vibration, et cetera. Um, and so it is that it is at that starting point of being able to understand that we are all here worthy of, um, joy of all of the pleasures of living in this life, of feeling love, of receiving love, of giving love. And, you know, that old um, saying, what we believe we perceive, because we cannot bring it into being unless we believe it. And so you said that you had this breakthrough, um, Travis, that you got these downloads. Was I guess that um, I, I feel like the question I want to ask you is, that breakthrough that you had in dealing with your own addictions, is that ultimately, and, and I apologize if you've said this, is that ultimately where is that ultimately what led you a to become a teacher of firewalking, but also the beginning of you really taking on that deep sense of self-worth of who you are, of I, I, I'm not. I am not articulating this question very well, but do you understand what I am trying to ask you? <laughs> ten, you ten, were actually, I got it. <laughs> and okay. okay, cold. I am, I'm so with you because um, I'm, I'm okay with sharing this um, because what you were just hitting was the nail on the head. Um, it was self-worth that I broke the broke through the ceiling of at that firewall. Um, I had been critiquing and judging myself because I couldn't have experiences that I was training myself to have, that I was investing time, energy, money into learning. And I felt very let down by myself. Hmm. I judged myself. I said, I should be able to do more. I have this knowing inside of me. I'm capable of something so much more. Why can't I do it? What's wrong with me? You know, all of that self-harming self-talk yeah and when i got to that firewalk the thing that broke my ceiling was i in my core said to myself if this is all i'll ever have for gifts it's okay and That's, i walked yeah. and that is what broke my ceiling that acceptance of yourself it That's was really just true. that what you were just touching on was that ceiling of self-love. That's yeah. what I broke through. That's what activated my gifts that I had been all training about. and trying to tap into for so long. Yes, it's, it's all about self-love. Go ahead. It really Barbara. is. And part of, I think that a lot of times when people are suffering from addiction, there's uh, so many reasons why people go down that path, but um, not really um, having the emotional regulation tools or the emotional intelligence, or you have like these voids or even like a lot of uh, highly gifted people are so sensitive that they need to numb it down and, and die it down a little bit so they can actually Absolutely. function. And so I want to bring this up because I think it's super important that, you know, learning how to love yourself um, is is so important in the realm of that and these tools can also support clearing out some of that energy so you can come to these awarenesses of like okay actually what am i feeling right now and what do i need in this moment and it's it's a balance of the mind the body and the soul where you're you're processing things and you're understanding what your needs are where you might never have been taught how to how to do that and feeling like you're missing something in life, feeling like you're, you, you don't have these tools, it automatically puts you in another 
place that other people are normal and you are not. And so a lot of times people will lean into that just so they can function or they're filling that void inside of them that they just don't understand. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of throw that in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think that when we talk about this idea of self-love, um, you know, I, I think many people walk around in deep self-loathing and they don't know that. And one of the, one of the signals is when we judge harshly when we judge others harshly it's because it is judgments that we hold about ourselves there and and it, that's just true and i think that, that that every time you know we um when we and every time we raise our awareness around that that's called enlightenment enlightenment is not being able to part the red sea it's bringing light to the to our subconscious of exactly. things that we hold inside of us that's all it is guys it's no big thing it's not like all of a sudden you have enlightenment and you can go walk on the clouds it's being able to wait, raise that. wait. susan i can't walk on clouds eventually i'm working real hard for that cloud walk <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll go to cloud walking with you. <laughs> okay, um, let's do it. But when, but after when we're done happens, with the fire. After we're done with fire, we'll go walk on clouds. But what happens is life just becomes easier. The yes. synchronicities happen. We don't feel like I always the analogy I use is we don't feel like we're this we're salmon, you know, uh, swimming against the stream. That we are flowing with life. That's the thing that happens as we raise our vibration. Is these synchronicities and life just becomes easier, and you get to shine your light brighter, and we create more light in the world. That's what happens. That's why these things are so important. That's why Val and I are doing this. Uh, right. this this podcast. So Travis, um, I would love to hear from you. I know that there are listeners, I can feel them, even though this hasn't even gone out yet, who are really interested in this. We've piqued their interest. Yes. Right. So Val, I don't know if you have any more questions, but I know my, I was about to go exactly where you were going. We're yeah. in alignment right now. So <laughs> Where can we find you next? Like, how yes. do we? Yeah, tell us. You have Absolutely. an event coming up. Yeah. So I have an event coming up um, that's happening the twenty sixth, uh, May twenty sixth in Ware, New Hampshire. Um, it's going to be a very intimate styled fire walk. Uh, we're only we're limiting it down to twenty five people, um, and it's really all about um, being able to face your fears. So it's reclaiming your power and facing your fears. This is the whole theme of the firewalk. It's going to have some ceremonial aspects to it, and it's going to be a really beautiful, um, really connective, really powerful, really profound experience for people. Um, I've just had so much coming in around this subject and this topic, so much new information that I want to share. So that's going to be the place that I'm going to share it for everybody to really tap into. And, really gain a, a real life experience, something tangible that they can take home with them. And we'll put um, the links and everything in the show notes for everybody. I think just talking about the location, I've actually done a fire walk there. So as Susan and the location is absolutely breathtaking. It's like on a mountain, like the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. So anyone that's um, kind of curious about fire walking and they really want like a full experience, like that's definitely going to be the place to do it. Um, the hosts, uh, Jamie Archambault um, and Keith yeah. Archambault, they're absolutely amazing human beings and it couldn't be at a better space if you've never done it before. So highly recommend just from somebody that's done it. There Me too. Yeah. I highly recommend too. And I guess the other question I have for you, Travis, do you do anything outside of the physical location of fire walking? Do you, do you provide coaching of any kind? Do you work with people virtually? Like, is there anything else that you offer? Yeah. So, um, you know, I do the fire walking and I also organize private fire walks. So people that have their own groups, their own communities, their own intentions, right? I custom tailor those. Um, mm. So I've been doing a lot of those. I also certify instructors. So if people who have walked the fires or are just feeling that call of that remembrance of the old friend, I also lead trainings for people to reconnect and really re-establish that connection for themselves so that they can share it into the world. Um, Outside of that, I do a lot of uh, journey work. So I do a lot of um, journey workshops and helping people connect to their guides and to their own spiritual connections. 
And um, I do a lot of empowerment coaching with, with a shadow based focus and healing based focus. Um, but a lot of it's focused around empowerment. So helping people to feel empowered on that spiritual journey and be a part of it um, to support themselves. Um, and those are really um, some of the bigger things that I'm offering right now. I do some sound events and I you know, love playing with the frequencies and vibrations of sounds. Those are incredible. And um, those are popping up here and there around the area. So you'll have to check those out. I have one um, the 26th um, down in Massachusetts. I mean, if anybody's interested in that, I can share that link. The 26th but of? Tomorrow. Oh, so tomorrow. that would be April oh, wow. April 26th. But this is actually yeah. isn't airing until Monday. So it will be just a kidding. So clip <laughs> just it. Just kidding. We're just kidding. <laughs> clip it. Uh, that's the clip. Um, and um, yeah, it's really about just supporting the people who are in need of support. Yeah. And you guys collaborate. I mean, that's the other thing that I love about the world of healers. It's so much fun when just different healers collaborate to do different events. And I just want to mention that because, you know, um, I know that we have a lot of healers that listen to this as well. And I know you're open to that because you, because of the events that you have that you guys have done. Um, together and apart. Is there anything else, Travis, that you would like to say to our community that Val and I have not asked you? I mean, I would just say this. Um, when it comes to firewalking, um, it doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. It doesn't require a lot. You don't have to be a certain kind of person to do it. It's really something that in this day and age is accessible to just about anybody. Nine years and up, you know, kids can firewalk and they're profound firewalkers. Um, they're little I bet they are because they don't have any fear. Well, they do, but they show us how much fear we have. Mm. The children reflect back how much we've accumulated over the years. Mm. And they help us to reflect on just how beautiful it can be. Wow, that's um, beautiful. <laughs> and so, you know, the people that that think, oh, I can't, oh, I couldn't, I don't know that I've met anybody who can't or couldn't unless it was in their head, unless it was in their mind where they told themselves that their mind can't change or doesn't want to change. Mm. That's really the only thing that limits a person from being able to have a breakthrough experience at a firewalk wow. is the willingness and the openness. So yeah. anyone who's ever open is always welcome at my fire. Awesome. I mean, this was really informational. I love showing all of the different modalities of healing. There's so many um, and there's so many ways that we can reach people in the world of spirituality. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, if anyone um, has any questions um, or or anything at all regarding firewalking, all of Travis's information are going. It's going to be in the show notes um, after we post this podcast. Feel free to reach out to him. Subscribe to his mailing list if you want to get updates on his his events coming up. He does a lot of events. Um, and outside of that, um, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for thank coming you so on. Much. <laughs> yeah. And I want to thank all of our listeners. Um, as always, Val and I trust that you'll take what you need from this. And if you want to learn how to walk on clouds, Travis will be <laughs> teaching that next. <laughs> and we love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.